there is no evidence around that doing any of these antisocial uh, separation or prohibition or whatever you call it has any effect on the epidemic. With one exception, it, it broadened, uh, flattening the curve, what people try to do, is broadening it. And that means it takes more time. And if it takes more time, in the end, you are putting more people at risk because nobody can, for extended periods of time, follow these uh, draconic um, strategies or measurements. However, if they die of the coronavirus or of another virus while just having also corona, that can't be determined for sure. So when you look at the death rates in Italy, you want to know where the tests have been taken, where and how have these few available tests been used, if they were used in a hospital on serious or terminally ill cases, then obviously the corona death rates rise. But, uh, let's say that, uh, and, and this is an entirely hypothetical scenario, that uh, that new coronavirus uh, uh, was not detected. You know, no one had noticed it uh, and no one had found that this is a new entity. And uh, eventually it killed 10,000 people in the U.S. based on this presentation that uh, you have respiratory distress syndrome, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Most likely, you would have counted that within the bin of influenza-like illness, which, as I said, is killing already 30 to 60,000 people. 10,000 more or less would be very difficult to pick. It would be well within the range of statistical noise. And uh, uh, probably no one would have noticed, or uh, perhaps some experts would have said that this year, influenza seems to have higher activity. One is that the data they're getting is incomplete to really make sense of the size of the threat. Uh, we're getting very crude numbers of cases and deaths, very little information about testing rates, contagious uh, uh, analysis, uh, severity rates, uh, who's, who's being hospitalized, who is in intensive care, who is dying, what are the definitions to decide if someone died of the coronavirus or just died with the coronavirus. There's so much important data that is, that is very hard to get to, to guide the decision about how serious the threat is this. The other part is that we actually do not have that much uh, good evidence for these social distancing methods. It was just a, a couple of reviews in the CDC Emerging Infectious Diseases Journal, which uh, showed that although some of them might work, we don't really know to what degree, and the evidence is pretty weak. Doctor, I want to read for our viewers what the CDC says in part about how to count COVID deaths r relating to that last issue we just raised. In cases where a definite diagnosis of COVID cannot be made, but is suspected or likely, like the circumstances are compelling with a reasonable degree of certainty, it is acceptable to report COVID-19 on a death certificate as probable or presumed. So, doctor, what's the problem with that? Well, in short, it's ridiculous. I spent some time earlier today just going through the CDC's manual on how to complete death certificates and part, the parts that were specifically written for physicians. And in that manual, it talks of precision and specificity, and that's what we were trained with. The determination of the cause of death is a big deal. It has impact on estate planning. It has impact on future generations. And the idea that we're going to allow people to massage and sort of game the numbers is a real issue because we're going to undermine the trust. And right now, as we see politicians doing things that aren't necessarily motivated on fact and science, the public's going to, their trust in politicians is already wearing thin.